Hi Trinity Rock and Pop drummers, hope you're well. Quick talk through video for you here for uh, Grade 5 Trinity Rock and Pop, Sir Duke Stevie Wonder. Now this is an absolute classic. I would say for every drummer, in my opinion, under the sun, they need this kind of feel in their vocabulary. This lovely, lolloping, swinging, you know, 16th note Stevie Wonder thing that influenced you know, generations of great sort of soul, funk, R&B, pop, whatever else music that came after it. This song and the record it comes from, Songs in the Key of Life, is like, as far as I'm concerned, for a drummer and for most musicians in that contemporary music, is your bread and your water, man. It's, it's like, it's absolutely essential. Your musical life can't, just, can't go on without it. There are probably musicians who disagree, but I just think this is kind of pretty much the Bible, man, in terms of uh, like modern music and anything with a funky kind of slant or get a soulful kind of slant or, or anything like that. R&B, it's a solid goal. Um, this is pretty much the original version of the tune. The original goes on a bit more at the end and goes around the chorus a few times a bit more and it's got some kind of bigger improvised drum fills that don't really feature here. Of course, once you've nailed this down, you could obviously play along with the original and get some of that going as well. And of course, as ever, we're always saying it, but I'm such a big believer in this, the reason to do these grade pieces is not primarily to pass exams, although that's cool, and not primarily to be able to say, oh, now I can play Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder, well, that's quite cool. It's about skills, man. It's about being a musician. It's about equipping yourself with a set of skills that you can then go out into the uh, world and learn. Age old thing, musicians always, or drummers here always ask me, what do drummers do? Parents ask me actually, what do drummers do after grade eight? They go and play music. That's what we're doing here, man. Like, that's the point of this. It's not to be a lifelong drumming, flipping academic. It's to be a musician. Like That's what this is. We're learning to play the drums and then we're going to go out and use that, enjoy that. And this is one of those things you have to have a, a classic set of skills uh, in that sort of funky swinging 16th uh, mold to use. Right, intro, here we go. It goes. So we can see straight away that it, or hear straight away as well, that it's got that one and a two and a. So one eighth, two sixteenth note feel on the hi hat. One and a two and a three and a four and a. Except, and here's the big thing we're shuffling it, we're swinging it. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one. So this is all about capturing that lovely swinging, lolloping sixteenth note feel. One and a two and a three and a four and a one. So I'd say before we get too distracted by the part, just get that feel going, man. Stick the music on, stick the original on, stick the demo version on here, stick a click on, and just get grooving with a four on the floor, kick drum, and a... One of those on the hi-hat. Could be all with one stick like I'm doing there, could be two sticks. No, that's too much. It certainly doesn't matter as much as does it feel right, man. Have a listen to that original. Uh, the original is played by a guy called, I was thought it was Stevie Wonder himself. It's actually not. It's a guy called Raymond Pounds. And he is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a delicious feel, man. One and a two and a three and a four and a. In terms of the variations, once you get the feel really going, in the fourth bar it goes on the kick. One and a two and a three and a four and a. Hopefully you'll, you hear all this, right? On the second line, we've got and then So bar five is regular kick, four on the floor, bar six has got two eighth notes at the end, bar seven is regular kick, four on the floor, and then the drum fill. Now we're going to think about the theory here. It's a kick drum on beat one. It's a snare drum on the E, the upbeat semiquaver. One E, which remember is swung. One E and a two E and a one. one. Then a snare drum hit on beat two. One E and a two E and a. First half. And the second half, 16th note rest on beat three. We come in on E on the high tom. We then have R. Uh, so another upbeat 16th on the mid tom. Three. Two eighth notes at the end. So three. Whole thing. Now, as I've said before in these videos, um, 
the counting is great, counting is useful, and you know, sometimes when you're working out a drum fill, it's absolutely brilliant. Sometimes that count is your candle in the dark. When things get tough, when things get complicated, that is a great way of working stuff out. I really feel strong, like, in this a tune like this, you've got to feel the thing as well, man. Boom, ba, ba, boom, 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 boom. This is all about sitting and listening with the music, you know, grooving with it, enjoying it, like spending quality time with this song, man, because this is, this is great music. So spend time listening to it. Uh, that's what we're looking to do by repetition, by hearing it. You could do a big, uh, you know, um, playing by ear thing here. That's, yeah, sure, work out the count, why not? One, two, and a two, and a three, and a four. But basically, man, you've got to hear and feel that thing. So a great little loop that we often do in the lessons here is to do one bar of the hi-hat intro group and then one bar drum fill. I'm going to start that slow and pick up speed. Sense. I would say if you're right handed there, sticking would be something like kick left, right, then I reckon left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. The idea being when you're playing 16th notes, right, 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a, especially when you're playing around the kick, under normal circumstances, whether you're swinging or not, you play right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. And what we're doing here is whichever notes we're leaving out of the sixth of a full 16th note phrase, we're just leaving out that stick. So it would be. Three E and a, right, left, right, left, but we're only playing E and a, so left, left, and back onto four and eighth notes at the end. So sticking, left, left, right, right, right. Not set in stone, that's my little recommended sticking there. Verse groove goes like this. Nice. Groovy groove. Now, once you get this up and running, you can ad lib the hi hat skips. Have a load of fun with that. What we all pretty much always do in the sessions here is at first just play it as a repeat, man. Get the feel of the thing first. Don't start performing the song till you've sort of learned it a bit and got to know it a little bit. The groove is one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and four and a. So again, remember to swing the sixteenths. Not the eighth notes, they're straight, but the sixteenth swing. So it looks like it goes one and two and a three and four and a one and two and a three and a three. But those sixteenths need to swing. crash on the first bar of the verse but on the repeats or and on the continue similar as per drumming convention we don't hit a crash on the first beat each time uh, okay one thing to watch out for almost everybody does this when they first start don't hit the hi-hat with the snare here if almost everybody goes out of sheer habit the snare drum is on its own variation there above where it says vary fills on repeat we're not on the repeat here so we're not varying this it goes so we've got two beats there each diagonal slash is one crotchet or quarter note of kind of continue similar make it sound cool so say that we're playing a really simple groove at first we're looking at bar 12 now the last bar of the third line one and two and three and for a lot of guys starting in grade five not everybody for a lot of guys that takes a bit of slowing down and programming the thing in. That's got a snare drum on the E of beat three in between the hi-hats. Watch out for that. If you need to, 
work that bit out one note at a time. Hi hat the kick, snare drum on its own. Hi hat, hi hat and snare, open hi hat and kick. Program it in, man. Age old advice, but still good advice, I think. Uh, show your hands and your feet the combinations a few times first. Just get to know it a bit. Deathly slow if you need to, man. Come on, then we carry on at 13, skip through. Now, once you've got uh, up and running here, you can throw in some variations on the hi hat. I really don't think there is a bigger deal as nailing down the feel in the first place. Um, again, like before, you could use either one or two sticks on the hi-hat here. As long as it feels good, that's fine. Little drum fill at 16. The end of the fourth line will go. So the first two beats, again, of groove. One, and three, a four, and. This is a four, and. As in, three, e, and, a. So beat three, three E and a, uh, sixteenth notes. E and uh, one last time, bar sixteen. Okay, seventeen. Just because a record has a groove, has a kind of disco feel to it. different from the original. On the original uh, there are not as many open hi-hats. It's not open close all the way, it's just every now and again, but uh, yeah, disco feel here. One. Hopefully at this point grade five, if you've done grade four and grade three to some extent as well, uh, depending on what uh, exam board you did, you'd have some open close hi-hat skills going. Hopefully you have. One. That's the kind of key a skill there, the hi-hat going up and down, opening on the and. So 17. 18. The big, big thing to watch out for is that moment of the which happens twice in this little section, is actually in a different position in the bar each time. So bar 17. Bar 18, one and two, and three, and four. Those two little snares there, and uh, after beat three, then and one. Now bar 20, one and So this time the ba ba come after beat two, instead of after beat three where they came before. Watch out for the crash at the end of bar 20 as well. That is without a kick, man, everyone every time, right? It's without a kick. Cool. Everyone goes. No. Oh, there'd be a big black dot at the bottom, man, if it was, if there was a kick. Here we go. No kick. So one time again from 17. Fun little bit, now the chorus. So basically a nice straightforward straight eights feel here. There's a really cool bit in bar three where you've got the snare on beat four, followed by on the very next 16th, on the E, the crash with the kick. So third bar here, bar 23. One, two, three. So first three bars of the chorus. Okay, the last uh, bar of the first line of the chorus has a little fill at the end, and four E and. So an upbeat quaver on the and of beat three, all on the snare. This is 
40 and, but with a swing feel, 40 and. And 40 and. One and two and three and forty and one and two and three and motorbike. The first two notes of that three note figure at the end need to be swung, man. Okay, hold first line of the chorus. Okay, next line, start at 25. It's pretty much all the same stuff, isn't it? So you've got 25, 26, 27, same as above, and then just a different drum fill in the fourth bar. By 28, this is gonna go. You might have spotted this has got the same rhythm as over on the first page, bar 16, just that this time we play it all on the snare. Okay, I'm going to play the whole chorus one time. Cool. You don't have to, by the way, play two different crashes. If you got them, cool. If not, fine. Just play it on one. Then we're back to basically the intro again. Uh, 29. This time trashy hi-hat, so slightly open with a flat sizzly sound. But I say this is pretty unusual, a trashy hi-hat, but not in a sort of rock way, in a sort of light, uh, sizzly, funky way. And then right at the end, uh, the last part of all on the second page. There's two little swung sixteenths, one and a two and a three and a. Uh. Then we've got repeat marks which take us all the way back to the verse. So we go all the way back to bar nine here, that's not the end of the song. The repeat marks take us all the way back. We do another verse, watch out, it says vary fills on repeat. So the fills, this time you do differently, man. This is your chance to shine, man. Do your own thing. Lovely. 17, all that stuff is exactly the same. The chorus is the same. You do the trashy hi-hat bit all the way through again, and we end on bang. So from the start of the verse, bar nine, to the end of the song, all of that goes around twice. And on the original, like we said before, it goes into more choruses then after that. Uh, for us, that's the end. So that's it, man. It's all about the feel, I can't stress it enough, even more than the accuracy of getting the fills of stuff right, which is a good thing to aim for, of course, it's got to swing. That intro's got to be... That drum fill's got to be... That verse has got to be... Just because a record has a groove, 17's got to be. Chorus has got to be. And the outro, trashy hi hat's got to be. It's got a swing, man. Have a listen to it loads and loads. Check out the demo version. Um, have a listen to, uh, of course, Songs in the Key of Life. All those great tunes, uh, especially this one, obviously. And it's a winner, man. Get that feel down. It's way bigger than just this song. It's about an awesome like skill set and vocabulary and feel that uh, is going to make people want to play along with you, man. Other musicians are going to want to play with a drummer who can, who can nail this feel. Thanks so much. Any questions, give us a shout. Thanks, as always, uh, for watching. And all the lovely people who bought me a coffee on, buy me a coffee, massively appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. Thanks so much.